Is it Cameron? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to this episode of Red Cape Sports. And welcome to the family. We're going to be talking about my 2020 investment strategy. Did you get that? Yeah. I had enough. I'm through with this. We're done. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another exciting episode of Red Cape Sports. What we're going to be doing is talking about my current 2020 sports card investment strategy. Now, if you don't know, Bird and I have been doing sports cards for at least the past few years together. Bird has been getting into sports cards uh, for the past five to ten years still. So he's been in the market a lot longer than I have. Of course, the market has been exploding, but I'm going to be sharing with you some of the adjustments that I've been making and a little bit about uh, my methodology and how I'm going and approaching this 2020 season. There's still a lot left. We've still got the rest of October, tons of November and December. We're going to be getting some more basketball coming at us. So again, listen and pay attention also if you haven't already don't forget to smash the like button also subscribe we have tons of video content on sports card investing and collecting we're going to be getting into a little more pokemon as the market has been adapting and growing as well so investment strategy number one is going to be to hold your basketball cards yes basketball is going to be starting very soon and if you're selling now i really think you're gonna regret it if you were picking up players like luka Doncic, zion williamson trey young if you were picking up uh, michael porter jr you may want to be holding on to those cards as soon as the season kicks off especially mid-season or when these players get into playoffs let alone if they win a championship this upcoming year, um, you're gonna wanna hold on to their cards. It's not worth selling right now, in my opinion. If there are players that you've been wanting to get rid of, go ahead. But if you have high grades of players that you love and that you believe in, stick with it. The market will jump, at least in my opinion, I really think it's gonna jump. So don't be too quick to sell your basketball cards. Along with the basketball cards, if you were picking up Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, a little more vintage, um, you know, well-established players, then definitely hold on to them as well. Um, I believe long-term, they're a good play, especially Shaq, Kobe. If you're getting players like LeBron James and others, they're gonna be a great long-term hold. But again, don't forget, when the next documentary comes out um, and they feature some of these players, you may want to be holding on. The way I look at it is that there's going to be basketball fans. And even if things don't open up, we have already seen a huge climb in basketball. So in my opinion, I would hang on to all basketball. Number two is going to be to grade as many cards as possible. I know this can be somewhat expensive. Number one, the turnaround time for getting your cards back from PSA BGS has been a long time. So if you ship them off now, you're going to enjoy that investment later down the road. Also, number two, you're probably gonna have to pay more if the cards go up. So if you don't know, especially with PSA, you're going to have different tiers for the value of your cards after they're graded. So you do wanna pay attention to this. My recommendation is that if you understand and if you believe that a player is undervalued, take care of the, take care of the business now and you will be rewarded much later in the future. Simply put, looking back at the past year and a half, two years that I've been getting heavily back into sports cards, it's really all about the condition of cards. It makes high graded cards very valuable and it is much easier to sell as well. So that's gonna be a very good note. It's also going to be much easier to sell if you have high graded cards. Along with that, we're gonna step into number three and that is gonna to be to only pick up mint cards or graded cards. Now the main reason you wanna do this is because it is easier to flip, to sell, if a card's in good condition. One thing that I did last year, which was a great move, but could have been even greater, was that I was picking up tons of Charizard Base Unlimited Pokemon cards. Those cards that I bought weren't the best condition, 
Had I bought in fewer cards, but in better condition, I wouldn't have people trying to lowball me, telling me how horrible the corners are. If I would have just picked up the good condition, lightly played, or PSA graded cards, I would have been in a much better position to sell um, at any time versus, you know, trying to find the right person. Not only is the card gonna be authenticated, but you're also gonna have a higher grade. The card value should be higher. It's also just gonna be much easier to sell. Tip number four is going to be to narrow down your investments. What I mean by this is to make a list of 10 to 30 investments and narrow it down to maybe two to five. I know this may seem like you're really narrowing things down, but it is really important. If you narrow down those investments, you're gonna know that those are your almost for sure investments. You're gonna know that those are the right picks because you're going to do a process of elimination. And on top of that, you're also gonna have more cards of that player or that thing or that sealed wax that you've been buying. You'll be able to sell in lots and books and you're also not going to be diversifying too much. Even if you look at guys like Warren Buffett, um, diversification can also destroy you. If you diversify too much, then in my opinion, you're probably playing too safe. A good pro tip along with that is to make sure that if you're buying a specific player for basketball, to get the right brand of card. Instead of just getting all the mosaic or the optics, maybe see what the market wants. For example, for basketball, pick up as many of the prisms or prism silvers, because that's simply what people want and you're gonna have more valuable cards. That was one mistake that I did that I wish I would have done a little bit different. Number five is to grow your long-term play. I bet you there are tons of you that only have new rookie cards or you're super high risk. Don't be afraid to diversify in the sense that you are selling some of these rookies and putting it into more established players like the Shaqs, like the Michael Jordans, if you can afford them. Um, just more long-term things that will go up slowly over time. But again, a big rule is that you never want to lose your money. Also, in my opinion, when you are putting cards into your long-term storage or if you are maybe moving some of your riskier rookie investments into long-term players like Kobe, Shaq, those are at least the ones that I'm getting. Um, you have a more sense of security. They are much easier to sell in my opinion and you don't have to wait for them to have a great year. They're naturally just gonna go up for the most part as long as you are getting the right cards. Six is to be patient. Um, I know it's not easy. There's the FOMO, the fear of missing out. Um, when somebody tells you, hey, you should get this card or hey, get into soccer, get into football. Get in about, don't, don't listen to that. Whatever you understand, go with that. Me personally, I understood that Pokemon was undervalued. I saw that Zion would be a big deal. I went with those because I understood it and it just made sense to me. I understood that particular market. So that's what I recommend. Be patient. Also, don't just listen to anybody. See what makes sense. If it's logical in your head, if you see it happening, then that's incredible, but also, just be patient with everything. Also, try to have enough cash on hand. Don't just buy something because it's good at the moment. Don't replace what you're trying to do long-term with something that you wanna do in that moment. So that's gonna be a good pro tip. Again, don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, hit it twice, why not? Um, also, we have a Facebook group called at Red Cape Sports. There you can post your favorite sports cards. I'm gonna do it today. We have tons of cards on the table. Um, also, stay tuned. Every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, we're going to be posting at 6 p.m. And we also have a sports card investing and collecting course for just, I believe, 10 bucks online. So we will have a coupon code in there for you. We will set it for a month. So if you want to learn sports card investing and collecting, then we have that for you. So again, we will see you next week.